We're going to be installing an executable today in Linux. Now, it should be noted that we're going to go from a very basic setup using just a GUI interface and then go into more complex uh, type of overlays and other things that you might want to include in your applications on Linux. Uh, this is going to cover a lot of things, so please bear with me. Check the timestamps. And with that, let's jump into it. First off, what do you use this for? Well, let's just say you have Path of Exile installed, which is a game... Um, and you need the path of building that's a, just a Windows executable. Well, we can do that. It'll look like this, and it's exactly the same as Windows, but how do we install that Windows program on Linux? And then also, I, I wanna go through a more advanced type of uh, install using an overlay or actually an injection into Final Fantasy XI, where we'll actually inject uh, a Sheeta and create an entire overlay and add a lot of functionality to that old game uh, such as better graphics, uh, more intuitive gear swaps, all kinds of craziness in that uh, to where you can see the more basic application and then the more advanced application, all using Wine, Lutris, Proton, all that. Uh, you'll you'll understand a lot better uh, than just, hey, go to Lutris.com or .net and hit install. That's That's fine for most things, but you really need to know this. So let's start with installing an executable for path of building and just kind of show that. Now, it doesn't have to be this. This is a more simplistic uh, add-on application, maybe a utility that you might download from GitHub or or elsewhere, just a little add-on for an existing game or another application. So in Lutris, I'm going to do everything here just so we have easy access to it. Uh, but these are applicable outside of it uh, using command line, but I don't want to go into that today. I'll probably make a separate video for that. So we'll hit the plus button up here, and then we'll say install Windows game from media. It's not really a game. It's more of a utility, and we'll call this path of building, and we'll hit install. This is going to be the path where it's going to be installed, and then we need to select the setup file. This is the executable, setup.exe or whatever it might be. Uh, I went to the path of building community fork uh, over on GitHub, but uh, you could be their website, whatever it might be, come to releases, and then simply just download the setup executable here uh, or for whatever program you're using. So that's where I get my executable form for this specific one. We'll come back over to Lutris, browse to that, download, and we'll select it, hit OK, and continue. It'll set up the wine bottle. This should not take very long. If it does take longer, you might have some issues with your system, but you should immediately come into this community setup. Or if it's a really big file, I remember when I installed Final Fantasy XI from Executable because the Lutris installer didn't work for me. Uh, same, same process. That took a lot longer because it was about 20 gigs worth of data that was loading up for install. So we'll hit next. I agree. I agree. And then we just hit uh, finish. We don't want to run the program just yet because it should have a return code of zero. That means it was successful. We are now installed and we can just hit launch from this screen and then that should launch into it. Uh, this did not. So we'll just hit configure and see what happened. Under game options, there's no executable set. That's, that's problematic. So we need to go to that path and select where this was installed. And this one has a long path name, so we'll just find it in here. Uh, we could have selected a different path uh, during the actual executable install, but uh, this is where its default is. We'll just hit save to this. Now we'll try and hit play and see what happens. And look at that. It's already updating, and we should have a full-blown path of building from the community. Very basic. This is the easiest install you could possibly do uh, for a simple Windows program. Obviously, I could remove, <laughs> I don't need to know my FPS, but this is uh, a little tool. If you use Path of Exile or play a Path of Exile, this is invaluable. You can paste entire builds into here or plan out your entire build for your character in that game. Uh, but this is this simple utility, and I just wanted to show that easy install. Now let's get into something a little more complicated. Uh, first off, there's Final Fantasy XI. This is a 20-year-old game. And a lot of games, like all-inclusive ones, like the more modern, Guild Wars 2, even League of Legends, most of these come with everything configured from the client. Well, back 20 years ago, that wasn't all the case. So what happens when you install one of these applications, and then all of a sudden you need to launch a different executable inside of it? So if we launch into Path of, or Final Fantasy XI here, you can see, I'll just hit Configure, 
This is doing uh, some different things. I'm doing some injection and some craziness with a program called Ashita, but I changed all this up from the default install, mainly because this program just doesn't work right out of the gate. So I usually come down into here, run an exe from inside the prefix. This drops us into where this folder, container, wine bottle, all of that is kind of the, it's interchangeable words uh, for what this is doing. Go into drive C. This is as if you were in, in Windows looking at your folder structure. Now, Ashita is this secondary program I've added, but the first thing I would do after installing Final Fantasy XI is come into Play Online, Square Unix, uh, this one, and then come into Tools. And then there's a separate config tool that will launch within. You only need to run this tool once, maybe twice, after uh, you initially do it. All these options are set up. You set your resolution. Typically, you always want the window mode to be full screen, not borderless or a windowed. Obviously, that's going to cause more issues. I always think when setting up these wine bottles, full screen is the best policy. That's about it. Uh, one other thing I like to do is gamepad settings. Uh, you have to hit enable game, and then <laughs> you have to put X input if you're using a 360 controller. With that, you just hit OK, close, save settings, and this game is now configured. But to add a Sheeta in, I would just right click and say browse files. This gives us the base directory where everything is. And what I did was dropped all of the sheet of files directly into here. Now there's a problem with this because when I go to launch a Sheeta from here, if I go run executable and I select this right here, a Sheeta.exe and I hit okay, it never pops up because there's a lot of dependencies. So what you need to do is add those. So I'm gonna pull up their official website and see what requirements I might be missing for this program. So this is more of the advanced section if you haven't gathered. And what you'd wanna do when you add a program like this and it's not launching, look at its system requirements. Obviously this needs .NET, a lot of C++ runtime libraries, and we need to add that to this uh, prefix or this run. So back in Lutris, we're gonna do exactly that. I wanted to show both those locations. We'll simply come down here and click into Wine Tricks. Wine Tricks allows us to add these requirements that are needed. Always select default wine prefix, install DLL or components. And this is where it gets a little tricky. And I, I'd like to do these one at a time. Typically you get the best results when doing that. For .NET requirements, don't click a whole bunch at once. Click the highest required .NET, and then it will install the prerequisites for that. So a lot of times uh, people need .NET 4.5, or I've even run into 4.7.1, or whatever it might be. You'd select the highest tier first, and then you'll realize that those dependencies of 4, 4.5, all those will get installed along with that just that one. So you only need to select the highest one, and then hit install. This does take a long time and it's done quietly. So you know, a lot of times it'll run for 10, 15 minutes without much user interaction. So that's something to be aware of. The next thing is that'll take care of the .NET requirement. And down here, you'll see the VC run ones. I've noticed you could do 2010 through 2015 all in one go. So you can select all four of those and hit okay. And then I usually add the 2017 independently, 2019 independently, and those I, I do separately. And you just do those one at a time, boom, they get all installed. And now our prefix is pretty much hitting the requirements, but it still won't actually do that. So what I do is create a new runtime for this, because when we click play to a sheet over here, you'll notice it creates an entire desktop, a virtual desktop for us. So I took this configuration from in here and I expanded it. Under runner options, I switched it to a virtual desktop. I actually enabled this and then made the virtual desktop uh, more of like half my screen since I'm using tiling, works great. So if we look at the same setting over here, you'll notice I mirror the game options except I changed the runner to a sheeta.exe instead of the injector because I don't want to launch into the game. I just want to configure it. And then I do virtual desktop so that I can have this entire thing. It's as if I'm in Windows desktop and I have the full GUI uh, externally and I'm not digging through or doing any kind of shenanigans. And this one is just using a different uh, injector. So to show you that, 
it should launch into our Final Fantasy. You see that you sheet it enabled. And from in here, we just do our full sign in. You'll notice the tiling is not the best for this, but that's okay. I'll just go ahead and speed up this login process. And you'll notice I already have like my overlays, all this still works great over here. And I've actually found the graphics and a lot of the upscaling I'm doing to this 20 year old game really breathes new life into it. And I'm able to use it on Linux. So uh, it's really a, a win-win for me. And I also can use my little controller here. Uh, works just fine right out of the box. So I have a mini map, I have an equipment viewer, I have a bunch of add-ins to just make this game a little easier to play. And you can actually see how good the graphics are with the upscaling. You can see some of the textures that aren't upscaled and some of them that are. Obviously my model's upscaled and then over here the door isn't. You can actually see the ridges. Uh, but just a cool example of doing a retro game like this. Now, if you missed anything there with the Ashita installer, it has a special run command uh, over in game options. This typically would be the old pol.exe, but I changed it to injector.exe. And then in quotes, I grabbed the XML file from Ashita. In browse files, you can actually go into drive C, Ashita under config and then boot. These are your actual XML files you can boot to. If there's a space, make sure you put quotes around your XML file with the injector. That's one little tidbit. There's gonna be stuff in the game that you're trying or, or the program that you're trying to install that you should definitely check out because there's a lot of uh, tinkering and you pretty much can get anything going uh, using these methods. Chris in the future here, as I was editing this, I was like, oh crap, I forgot to mention. If you're doing this and you need to interface with like a Kingsington or a Logitech mouse, those types of hardware type of uh, Windows-based utilities don't typically work through Wine. I should have uh, stipulated that. I just wanted to leave that out just so you know. So anyways, back to the video. But with all that said, let me know what you think of using Wine and Lutris in this manner. I love how Lutris has expanded and it's so easy to use Wine now with it. And I've had just such a blast getting all these old games and different programs that aren't necessarily listed anywhere included into my Lutris. And it just made my life way easier without having to remote in or do anything crazy. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.